Hello and welcome to Sierra Make. Today's video is going to be another stuffed animal video. I know in the last one I said something about making a egg or a cuttlefish, but I'm still waiting on some fabric for those. I did, however, get my hands on some black fur, so I thought I would make today's plushie super simple and just make a black furry ball. If you've seen any of Studio Ghibli's movies, sometimes they have these little soot sprites that crawl around or do things, move coal and stuff. Um, and I think they're super cute and they're a super simple design, just a little black furry ball with some eyes. So that's what I'm going to make for today's stuffy. All right, let's get started. So first I'm going to start off with drawing up a design. I know it's just a pair of eyes, but since I'm going to be using the embroidery machine to make the face on the fur, I need to make a design that I can put into the embroidery machine. So I have my black background and I just drew up two large circles to be the eyes and I'm going to put some black pupils in them and adjust those around a little bit. And since this looks super plain and I didn't want it to look weird or boring, I just pulled up a picture of the soot sprites with their little star candies and I outlined those candies, colored them in the same color, and used those to add a little bit of color, pop, and cutesiness to the soot sprite design. By the way, these little star candies are Japanese sugar candies called Kompeto. And on my trip to Japan, I ate some of these and they were super good. I mean, it's basically just tastes like sugar. If I were to compare it to anything, I would compare it to rock candy. If you've ever had that, it's just like little balls of rock candy. Or maybe nerds, but nerds have different flavors and Kompeto just has sugar flavor. It's a fun little treat for kids or adults, I guess, if you just want something to crunch on. But anyways, back to the project. Now I'm just going to color in the different parts of this image, different colors that are strikingly different. This is just so that the embroidery program can really differentiate the colors on it uh, in case that yellow and the green look too similar so it doesn't accidentally mix them together. And now let's stick that on a USB drive and plug it into the computer. Here we have the image I drew up on the computer. There's the width and height it's going to end up being. And there are all the multiple colors that it will be using. This little embroidery face is going to end up having a lot of colors, so I'm going to need a lot of different threads. Luckily, my machine goes up to six threads, so it'll be fine. And now the machine's turned my image into a stitch file. You can see all of the stitches there, and I'm just going to take that stitch file and drag it over onto the embroidery machine. Now I'm just going to pull up the design, select the hoop size, and switch out the threads. So the threads I'll be using is this white and this light yellow, as well as this light green, this light pink, and the black. The white and black are for the eyes, obviously, and then those pastel pink, yellow, and green are for the stars. Now I'm just going to prep my fabric to put onto the embroidery machine. So here is my hoop that I'm going to be using. It's a little bit bigger than the other ones I've used. And I'm going to make sure that the fur is going in the direction that I want it to. So I want the fur to come downward. So I'm just going to brush that fur downwards so that it's nice and flat for me to embroider on and then stick the stabilizer behind it. I don't actually know if I need the stabilizer here because this fur is super thick, but I'm not going to risk it. So I'm just going to use the stabilizer anyways and sandwich those between my hoop.
here's our adorable embroidered face done. So I'm just going to pop it out of the hoop and rip that stabilizer off. And now we can cut out our ball pattern. So I decided to use this baseball style ball pattern instead of like a beach ball pattern or a basketball pattern. That way I would be able to make it fairly small and still include that face that I just embroidered. So I just took a regular baseball pattern and blew it up to the size that I needed. And now I just lined it up with the face so that the eyes would be in the center of that top round bit. And I'm going to cut it out of the fur. Notice that the fur is folded over at the midpoint because this is a symmetrical piece. One thing I noticed about working with fur is it makes a mess. Oh my goodness, the fur when you cut it gets everywhere. Like look at all of the fur bits on my hands. Anyways, now it's time to cut out a second piece that is the same shape. One thing that I really like about this baseball design is that it really only takes two pieces and it only takes one line of stitching to connect all together. So it's super simple and easy to do. Let's just brush that fur away again and here are our two pieces. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to have the piece with the face fur up and I'm going to have the other piece without the face fur down and I have to pay attention to the direction that the fur is going here. So if you notice, I made sure that the fur on the piece without a face is going sideways versus on the piece with a face, it's going down. Anyways, when you cut out your pieces and pin them together, just pay attention to the direction that the fur is going because you don't want it to like look rough or weird. You want it to look like it's all brushed in roughly the same direction. I've said anyways a lot. <laughs> um, now I just pinned the pieces together, making sure that there wasn't any weird gaps or any spaces. And I'm of course going to leave a hole for me to pull the whole thing inside out. And now let's get to sewing. <laughs> Now I'm just going to flip the whole thing inside out from the little hole that I left in the side. And let's stuff it! Now it's time to hand stitch that hole closed. So I just have a regular sewing needle here and some black thread and I'm going to double up the thread tying the end in a knot and stitch that hole closed with a hidden stitch. Doesn't it look so cute? Ah, it's so cute and squishy. Here's some sound clips of my family's reactions. Look at what I made. What is it? <gasps> That's so cute. It's a soot sprite. That's so cute. It's so cute. That is adorable. It's from Studio Ghibli. Yeah. But wait, Dust Bunny, where are you going? <laughs> Oh my god.
Dios. Honestly, I wasn't super happy with how boxy it looks, but oh my goodness, this is so like comforting and satisfying to squeeze. Just like squish. <laughs> it's so cute too. Look at it. <laughs> I'm glad I added the little candy stars because otherwise this might look kind of like a cartoon character like from Bugs Bunny or something. So the little stars make it much cuter um, and and adorbs. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's making me sneeze because it's a dust bunny. <laughs> If you've made it this far, thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button, share this video with other Ghibli fans, and please subscribe because I post every Friday at 3. Thank you for watching! Just a flak... flak? Burry blah? <laughs>